Hey guys, it's Miss Griffin, and today we're going to do some more work with nonfiction. As we study new topics and learn new information in our nonfiction books, we may come across words we've never heard of or we've never seen before. When we do, it's important that we don't just keep reading on, even though we do not understand the word. Instead, we want to notice that we've come across an unfamiliar word and we stop. Then we can try some different fix-up strategies to help us figure out what that new word means. Let's take a look at this chart to help us learn what to do. Don't let a new word get away. What do we do when we come to a word we don't know? What it means, a new word, we stop it. We can first study the illustration or photograph closely. We can think about what we are reading. We can open our mind to the possibilities when we visualize. We could place another word in the sentence to see if that would make sense. Sometimes this one really helps us whenever we're trying to figure out a word. We can identify a caption, hint, or a clue to help. We can, and then after we've tried all these things, we can um, try a class expert, such as, such as a teacher or a friend, or maybe your parent. That's a lot of fix-up strategies. So we're gonna do a little work with some, okay? So let's try some of these strategies out. We're gonna reread this book and think about some of the new and unfamiliar words that com we come across as we read. We will try many different strategies to figure out what each new word means. So let's read An Animal Community by Bobby Kalman. An Animal Community. Table of Contents, text feature, tells us what the story is about. What is a community? A community, oh, I've come to a word, I don't know what it means. I wonder what community might mean in this book. We use that word a lot in our classroom, but it might mean something different in this book. Let's check out our list of strategies to see what we should do first. The first strategy says, study the illustration or photograph closely. So I see animals, but I also notice that the prairie dogs, they're close together. Do you notice that in the picture? They're all really close. I'm going to think about what community means in our class, what I already know about the word community. And then I'm gonna compare what I know to the photo. When we're in our class, we're in a community. We all work together. And these prairie dogs appear all together too. A community is a place. It is also the group of living things that share that place. Living things are plants, animals, and people. Prairie dogs are animals that live in communities. They live in communities to stay safe. It says that Prairie dogs are animals that live in communities to stay alive. Wow, they must all help one another and keep one another safe. Do you see all the strategies that we just used to figure out the word community? We thought about what we already knew. We looked at the photograph. We compared what we already knew and the photograph. Then we kept reading and we realized the author told us what a community is. We used a couple different fix-up strategies and now we know what a community is. Let's keep going. Prairie dogs are not dogs. They are a kind of squirrel. We can read more about squirrels in page 22 through 23. A prairie dog town. Prairie dogs live in big communities. Their communities are called towns. Some towns are huge. They are deep in the ground. Towns have rooms and tunnels. The words towns and tunnels appear on these pages. If I think about what I already know about tunnels, so I think about what I already know, now I'm gonna try the visualize strategy. Remember we know what visualize means, make a mind movie. So I'm gonna visualize how tunnels and towns fit together. So I'm gonna think about how those, these two words fit together. It makes me think that tunnels are like little paths. Yes, and these little paths help the, the prairie dogs move around their community. 
wow, we're making connections and learning new words. Sharing food. Communities share food. Prairie dog communities share food too. Prairie dog towns are on prairies. Prairies are flat areas with grasses, flowers, and other plants growing on them. We came to a word, let's look at the word prairies. Let's read, keep reading on and see if it tells us, if that'll help us figure out what prairies are. We just read prairies are flat areas with grasses, flowers, and other plants growing on them. Prairie dogs eat these plants. So the author really helped us find out what this word means. All we had to do was keep reading and it told us what prairies are. Prairie dogs eat the flowers and other plants that grow on prairies. Prairie dog families. Okay, now this time I want you guys to help me with some words, okay? All right, get your whisper turtle out close by. You might need to tell him some things. Fam prairie dog families. Communities have families. Prairie dog communities also have families. Prairie dog pups. I've come to a word I don't know what it means. What do we do? Give up? No, look at the page. What can you do to help you figure out pups? Pull out your whisper turtle and tell them. Do you notice there's a photograph? Look at the pups. These are pups and we know these are pups because this caption right here tells us. Do you remember the text feature caption? Caption tell, t captions tell us about the picture. Let's see if the caption can give us a clue to help us figure out what pups are. The pups stay in their town in a room called a nursery. Whoa, another word I don't know, nursery. But I can look at the photograph to help me. And I can read the words. The pups stay in their town in a room called a nursery. So a nursery is a room where pups are. What does it look like pups are? Maybe baby prairie dogs, little prairie dogs. Okay, now we use what we already knew. We use the caption as a clue and we use the photographs. Now let's keep reading and see if the author tells us. Prairie dog pups or babies. <gasps> we were right. Pups are baby prairie dogs, are born in the spring. Prairie dog mothers feed their pups milk from their bodies. When the pups are five weeks old, they come above ground to look for food. Wow, the author really helped us figure out what pups are, and we didn't give up. We figured it out. Kiss your brain. Good work. Community daycare. How, let's see, sorry. Do you go to daycare? Prairie dog towns also have daycare. The mothers take turns looking after all the pups in one family. They watch over the pups and make sure they are safe. They also teach the pups which plants are good to eat. Working together. Prairie dog communities, community cooperates. Another word I don't know. Let's keep reading and see if the author tells us what cooperates means. Or works together. He told us. Cooperate means works together to dig their towns. Digging a town is a big job. Each prairie dog helps with the digging. These prairie dogs are talking while they work. The caption told us what's happening in the picture. They're talking to each other. Is this prairie dog stuck? Will he get out? Town guards. Communities have police officers to protect people. Wait, here's a word I'm not sure about. Protect. How can I be sure I know what it means? Well, let's use the words we read. We, the, book, the author mentioned police officers. Police officers take care of people and keep them safe. So I'll try replacing the word protect in the sentence and see whether that makes sense. Okay, let's try it. Communities have police officers to help people and keep them safe. Does that make sense? Yes, that's right. So protect must mean to take care of and keep something or someone safe. Prairie dogs also protect their towns from predators. 
Predators are animals that hunt and eat other animals. Foxes, coyotes, and hawks eat prairie dogs. Here are some labels. Coyote, what does this say? Fox, and what is this? A hawk. Prairie dog guards watch for predators, such as this hawk. They work together to keep their town safe. Prairie dog teachers. Communities have schools where children learn from teachers. Prairie dog towns also have teachers. Adult prairie dogs teach the pups how to stay alive. They teach them how to find food, how to dig tunnels, and how to guard. Guard? That's a word I'm not sure about. Let me look at the pictures to help me. I see a, one prairie dog stand. He's just sitting there still. So that doesn't really help me. But I look at this page and I see a looks like maybe a mom or dad or grown up. And then a baby, a pup, a prairie dog. Now notice how they're standing. They're very still. They're facing the same way. They're looking right in the same direction. Their bodies are the same way. They're almost like statues. Now let me open my, eye, my mind up to possibilities and think about what I know about guards. I know that when there's a guard somewhere, it means that they're trying to protect. They're looking out for something so that they can protect what they're, what's behind them. Could that be what a guard means? Let me replace what I think it means with guard and see if that's right. They teach them how to find food, how to dig tunnels, and how to protect the town from predators. Yes, so I can use what I already know. Guard means to protect, to stay and watch, just like they're doing in this picture. I'm going to kiss my brain because I did not give up on a word. I figured out what it meant by using all these different strategies. This adult is teaching a pup how to stay and guard. I was right. And the author wrote the words to help me figure it out. Communication. Communities share information. Sharing information is called communication. Prairie dogs communicate in different ways. They make loud calls to warn other prairie dogs of danger. They use different sounds to warn about different predators. People communicate love with hugs and kisses. Prairie dogs huddle and touch their front teeth together to greet one another. Wow, guys, using these fix-up strategies really does help us. We learn lots of different words today, really important words, by using our fix-up strategies. Remember that as we study new topics in nonfiction and learn new information, we also learn new words, words we've never heard of before, or words we've heard but we've never used because we don't know what they mean. It's really important that we figure out what these words mean in order to help us understand what we're reading. We can't ever let a word get away. So what do we do? Don't let a word get away. We stop it. First, we study the illustration or the photograph closely. Then we think about what we're reading. We open our mind to possibilities when we visualize the word and the pictures that we're looking at. We can, we can um, replace the, another word in that sentence to see if it makes sense, like we did for protect and guard. We can identify a caption, hint, or clue to help, like the word pup and nursery. Remember, we use the caption to help us figure it out. Or, and when we try everything we know and we can't figure it out, we always can try a class expert, such as a teacher or a friend or a parent to help us. Okay, guys, so as you continue to read and learn new things, make sure when you come to words that you don't know to stop it and don't let that word get away. Try your strategies and see if you can figure out what it means all by yourself. Kiss your brain, kiss your heart. See you next time. Bye.